Hey guys, Jim here, and I wanted to talk to you for just a few minutes about one of my hands down absolute favorite EDC brands, and that's Combative Edge. When I first discovered Combative Edge, uh, Rob Walker, the owner of the brand, was just at that point releasing his very first knife. And I honestly, I don't remember how I initially came across them, if it was in some kind of search or something, but he wasn't really overly heavily marketing them. At that point, you couldn't find them anywhere. I believe you could only buy them direct, and that was the M1. Once I got it, I went ape shit over it. I was telling all my friends. Uh, I had posted about it on my Facebook page, and all my uh, my friends and my fans there had gotten a chance to see it. This is also back in the days when uh, I owned the website when I had uh, when I owned my watch website. So I had at that time, um, you know, sixty thousand members of the forum, and I was just blasting it to everybody, going, "Listen, I don't know who here is in the knives, but you're if you're in the knives, you need to own one of these. You've got to have one of these." and kind of spread the word. And during the course of that, I ended up selling, I, I guess, quite a few knives for Rob. And he and I kind of got to be friends. You know, we text each other, we call each other, whatever, you know, celebrate the birth of each other's sons, that kind of thing. Um, he's just a super awesome guy. And what he wanted to do was build a simple, straightforward folding knife that somebody could carry every day and actually use to a tactical advantage. Now, again, I've discussed this in the past, I am not any kind of tactical kind of guy. I don't get paid to go out and defend anybody or protect anybody. I'm not going to pretend like I'm a professional that does such a thing. But Rob is. Um, you know, he runs a training center. He teaches people. You know, uh, I, I don't, and I, I apologize, Rob, I don't recall the, the style of martial arts that he teaches and that he studies. Um, you know, but it's all about hand-to-hand -hand combat and disarming and retention. There's so many cool things that he does, and he wanted to kind of filter all that into one knife. Now, we'll move the SR11 out of the way and just discuss uh, the M1 for a minute, because this is the one that really started it all. Uh, he, it's a big knife, and you need to be, be aware of that. It is a big knife. It's got a good amount of weight to it because you have a titanium slab on one side, uh, the G10 obviously helping a lot to reduce the weight, but I mean this is a uh, this is a uh, this is a big knife, very big blade. I'm the kind of guy I like a recurve, I like a nice big deep belly in my blade, but again, I'm not really trying to sharpen all my knives myself either. So I, I realize that having any kind of recurve in there makes it a little bit more challenging to sharpen. As you see, I'm not even going to bother to clean it up for the video. I use this knife. I beat up on this knife. It's still sharp, almost as sharp as the day I got it. There is Rob's logo for Combative Edge, marked for the M1. Uh, he did individually number each of the knives. And you'll see there is your blade steel and 690C. Uh, you know, at the time when I first got this, I had no idea. I wasn't really, and I'm still not, I'm not really a snob when it comes to my steels. But I've really become a fan of the N690C steel. It's a nice, strong steel, holds a good edge. And I've never had a single solitary issue with it. The ergonomics on the knife are phenomenal. Uh, but again, before I go off on any kind of rant, it's a bigger knife. It's going to be a little harder for some people to do uh, on a daily carry. doesn't bother me, as I've mentioned before. The pocket that I carry my knives in is solely for my knives. I don't carry anything else in that pocket. So it doesn't matter how long it is, how deep it goes in the pocket, it's not going to be hitting up against anything else. So you've got just about a four inch blade here. Overall, I'd say it's probably close to nine inches. I haven't measured it, but uh, that's why I'd say it's probably got just about a five inch, yeah, about a five inch handle on there. G10 on this side, all titanium on this side. And he did a couple of smart things here. Not only do you have a reversible clip on here, but he gives you this extra piece. Now, if you're like me, I prefer to carry tip up. So I switched out my clip, put it down here. And instead of this just being a spacer that fills in the gap where the holes are, it's actually going to be used as a lock bar over travel. So that was actually kind of ingenious the way that he did that. Um, nice simple hardware, doesn't stand out, doesn't detract away from the design. Nice back spacer. I'm the kind I prefer standoffs. I've mentioned that before as well. Uh, just because it's a little bit easier to get the uh, pocket lint and gunk out from inside of your uh, inside of your liners or inside of your, your frame. 
but you know what? It's it's not the worst thing in the world. It is a flipper. I have not lubricated this in probably three or four months. Uh, it's been kind of out of my daily rotation lately. Uh, it's about to go back into it, which is why I'm doing this video. So I'm going to be uh, taking it apart, giving a nice uh, cleanup and oil. And once it's all lubricated up, it's, it, they flip really nicely. It's a good heavy blade. Now, you don't have a super strong detent on it. But with the weight of the blade and the, uh, the tension on it, it's, it's going to flip out just fine. Let me give you a quick size comparison against some more maybe common knives that you're uh, you know, used to seeing. Uh, let's see. I like to always use either a large Sebenza or my Umnumzan. My newly pimped Umnumzan, which I'm still madly in love with. And that's why this hasn't been getting carried that often because, well, hell, if you had that, would you want to carry anything else for a while? I am deep in honeymoon phase on this. Anybody that wants to get this done, I'm telling you right now, any titanium slab side knife that you've got, send it over to Chris Martin over at Phantom Steelworks. Look him up at phantomsteelworks.com. All this mech work, all of this etching, all of this work, all of the heat treating, he did all that. Phenomenal job. Awesome guy. Super, super awesome. So anyway, back to the size comparison. As you see, the M1 is a considerable size of knife. Uh, you've got maybe about an eighth of an inch longer here and almost a half an inch longer here. So you've, you've got a good size knife here. It's going to be about the same weight as the... Whoa, hello. Let's just knock the camera all around. Yeah, maybe we'll put that back where it belongs. Schmuck. Like it's my friggin' first day doing this or something. Um, you know, it's going to carry about the same. It's about the same weight. If this were all titanium like the Chris Reeve, uh, this might be a little bit too heavy for a lot of people to carry. But again, uh, going back to the ergonomics, how it feels in the hand, it's incredible. I love... The cutout that he's done here, obviously your finger falls right into it. Your flipper will act as your finger guard. So if you do have to stab into something, your hand's not going to run up uh, onto the blade. It's also nice if for some reason you decide not to use the flipper, it gives you easier access to your thumb studs. Uh, he's got a nice distance on there uh, from the fulcrum. So it's actually going to pop the blade out nicely if you want to do it slowly. Or if you want to give it a, a thumb flick, it's going to work just perfectly. Matter of fact, it's a lot like pushing open the Omnums on. It's not going to be instantly the fastest thing you ever had. You're going to practice with it a little bit because you're kind of pushing outward and then up. But this little, this little swedge right here just drops you right into it. He's got a good amount of jimping back here where it counts for your reverse handhold. I would have actually preferred to have a little bit back here, uh, but there isn't any. It's very, very smooth back there. Uh, it's got a nice attitude adjuster, which is uh, right back here. This is great for uh, applying into pressure points, pushing into somebody's temple, uh, maybe gouging into their Adam's apple or eye. Whatever it is that you feel you need to do to adjust some asshole's attitude, it's certainly going to do it. So that's the M1 in a nutshell. Obviously, I'm not giving a full detailed review uh, of any of the knives that I do. It's more of an overview at all times. I think... If I were the kind of person that felt the need to have the perfect tactical knife, this might be it. I mean, it really, it fits in the hand, both in a forward and a reverse handhold, the perfect way. It's got a great blade on it. Um, the way it's designed, it's great if you have to slash when you push in and you come across, the blade is going to force itself deeper into the, uh, into the flesh. Uh, it's got a nice, strong reinforced tip. It's good for piercing. Uh, nice double swedge on there, too, which I forgot to mention. Overall, it's just a really good stout knife. If I was out there in the woods, I'm sure it's probably going to hack up some branches for me nice and easy and uh, all the other practical things. But the next one that came out was the SR11. Now, I am not a fan of anything in green. As a matter of fact, this is the only knife I own that has green micarta on it. But you know what? It adds a certain degree of personality that I kind of dig. I don't know, I, you know, I, I, I wasn't in the military. I don't, you know, play the military role. But I kind of like that military look that this has got just because of the color. Then you get to this amazing blade. Uh, I look at it as kind of a modified Tanto blade. It's certainly got a Tanto profile. It's not as truncated as a, a Tanto normally would be. It's a little more, uh, it definitely leans out more. It's a little more elongated as far as that goes. But again, it's a good 
all-around multi-purpose blade. Now, you don't have any real belly to it, but there's still equal sharpness up here as there is to here. So if you're having to cut something, you're going to be able to rock across this area right here just fine. So I think it's going to perform any menial daily tasks that you might have. I also like the feel of this because you'll notice the handle, the frame is really nicely curved. It's more of an organic feel than the M1. The M1 is very standard and it doesn't matter uh, how you hold it, it's going to feel the same as a lot of knives. This is a lot more organic. It feels like that, you know, like maybe Rob just took something squishy and put it in his hand and he squeezed it and then he dropped it and went, make me a mold just like that. And I doubt that's what he did because that would be retarded. But it, it kind of has that kind of organic feel. Now, for those that don't know, the manufacturer that he uses for these is Fox Knives out of Italy. And Fox, for a mid-range brand, you know, they're kind of hit and miss, in my opinion, on a lot of knives. But when they get a knife right, they really create a good, solid quality knife. And that's exactly what you've got here. Uh, again, going back to the plain titanium on this side, same pocket clip, nice retention, even a little tight. Um, I've never had a problem getting it in or out of the pocket. And, you know, I, one of the concerns I always have with my pocket clips is the retention because I ride a motorcycle. I don't want to be flying down the interstate at 90 miles an hour and, you know, my, you know, I move my legs around or I'm trying to get comfortable and, oops, I've pushed my knife out of my pocket. And that would just really piss me off and ruin my day. So uh, I'm really big on the pocket clip retention. One thing I'm a little weird about, I don't like deep carry pocket clips. So I'm glad this isn't. And you know the ones, they'll go all the way out to the very edge and hook over. You've got, I want something to grab onto. Now, when I'm grabbing my knife out of my pocket, I'm usually reaching all the way in, but I want to be able to grab this with the meat of my hands and pull it out. And if there's nothing there, I don't know, it's bothersome to me. So this was the perfect kind of clip for me. Yeah, it's kind of boring and generic looking, but again, this wasn't meant to be a showpiece. It was meant to be a tactical everyday carry knife. Um, that's also why I tend to use lanyards on half of my knives, just because it's a little something extra for me to grab onto and be able to yank it out as quickly as possible. Uh, he's utilizing the same system here uh, with the pocket clip and the extra retainer clip. So it will be used for the over travel stop on the lock bar. Uh, good lock up on these. Fairly early. And you know what? I've had this knife since it came out. So I'd say I probably had it about two years. And it has not walked over. I, you know, I haven't really looked at it. Let me look at my M1. I've had this since day one. Holy crap. The engagement on that is superb. And I have flipped the living hell out of this knife ever since I got it. And, you know, I've had that since the day it came out. So, yeah, kudos to you, Rob. Nicely done. Good job. So, uh, he... You know, he went from the G10 on this one to going into the Canvas Micarta. I like it because it's got a nice tactility to it. You can feel it in the hand. It's not rough, but it's it's a little uh, less slippery than other materials he could have used. Uh, the jimping is nice. Not It's not hard jimping. There's a little bit of a rounded edge to each one, but it's functional. It's going to work well for you. And there again, as you see, I mean, I use my blades. I don't I don't baby my knives. And this thing has lived up to every task that I've asked of it. Feels great in the hand, the contours, the shape, the size, the weight. I love this back spacer. It reminds me of like uh, the back of an alligator. I don't know if that was exact, you know, exactly what he was going for, but it, it kind of has that kind of hornback alligator look and feel to it. Um, the quality and the feel of operation, very, very smooth operation. And again, I have never lubricated this knife. I've had it for about two years. I've never lubricated it. I probably should, but I haven't. And it works great. Love the blade profile. Uh, let's see, is it perfectly centered? You know, it's a little off to the side. If I gave it a little tweak on the pivot, because it's not super, super tight, I guess I could probably tighten that a little bit. It would center that right up. As far as the M1 goes, damn near perfect. So, and you got to realize these are not $500 knives. I believe, and man, I'm really struggling here. I want to say these were each about 200 bucks or, you know, maybe a couple of dollars less. 
Rob has always been awesome. Um, each of the groups I've been involved in, whether it was the forum that I owned, I no longer own it, I sold it, um, or the uh, the Facebook groups that I'm involved in. You know, I always try to get Rob involved. I get people excited about his knives. Uh, anybody that's going to be interested in good quality knives, never gotten bad feedback. Everybody I've talked into a Combative Edge has raved, has absolutely loved it. And he's always been cool enough to participate and uh, give those guys a discount. So I, that's why I don't really remember exactly how much they were. But uh, if you're ever looking for something that you really want to rely on as a true quality tactical knife, not a showpiece, although, you know, it's not really a bad looking knife there, is it? No, it ain't there, Charlie. Um, this is going to be, uh, either one of these are going to be a great choice. Now for 2000. And 12, he switched over to uh, the black uh, for the scales on this one instead of the green. So only the first run had the green. Now you'll be getting into black, which, you know, probably a lot of people are going to prefer anyway. So once again, there is his logo, the SR11 name. Made in Italy. Individually numbered. Which I think is a cool thing. Is it going to make it worth anything in the future? Uh, hell, who knows? But you know what? It's nice sometimes to get something that's numbered, that's limited production, that you know not everybody on the block is going to have. So if you're looking for a good, solid, everyday carry, tactically oriented knife, there are going to be people out there that are probably going to leave comments, going to argue, that's not a true tactical knife, this knife or this knife or this knife. Listen, man, again, I'm not coming out of the sandbox. I'm not doing private security. I'm not out there trying to defend anybody's life. This is going to do everything I need it to do. If I'm stuck out alone in the woods, I'll be able to chop branches with it. Uh, I can start a fire if I need to. I can break up some wood. If I need to defend my life with it, trust me, I'm going to figure out a way to make this tactical. But it really is designed with that in mind. I think they did an excellent job. They're a little bit on the heavy side because he tends to use big, stout blades. But again... That's why you're buying the knife. You want a tough blade on there. I think he did an excellent job. I look forward to any future designs that he does. He's only got three knives out there. Um, he's got the M1, the SR11, and the uh, Salus, which is his fixed blade knife. And I do believe he is working on a Karambit right now. So that's really it. He's not trying to go out there and be the biggest knife maker in the world. He does it. It's, it's more of quality over quantity, as you can tell by doing limited production runs. But he's a great guy. He certainly knows what he's talking about. If you're confused, you're like, well, I like them both. Which one do I want more? I can only afford one. You know what? Shoot him an email. Contact him. Have a little conversation with him. And I guarantee he's going to be able to help you figure out what your, what your needs are going to dictate for which knife. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Thank you guys, as always, for the support. Um, I've been feeling the love, and it's been fantastic, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. So if you have any questions, leave me some comments, and I'll do my best to get back to you quickly.